Welcome everybody to Bible Bites. I'm Pastor Dan. We are reading through the Bible one small bite at a time. We've been in Matthew 24 for the past handful of videos. We're going to continue down that path in verse 32 today. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Jesus, of course, is talking about the coming of uh, his second coming and the end of the end of the world and the fig tree is just an example when you, we you can see its leaves changing you know that uh, summer or a certain seasons about to come and so everything Jesus has just said gives us an idea of, of a little bit of a timeline right there's things that are going to happen at the beginning but that doesn't mean the end is imminent but there are other things that are going to take place cataclysmic events that that uh, are, make it evident to us that okay the end is is now imminent verse 34 uh, truly i say to you this generation will not pass away until all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away so here everything is going to be made new right uh, but only god's word doesn't pass away only god's word is is a foundation that is permanent that we can build on that we can trust in but concerning that day and hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven nor the son but the father only so if anybody puts a date on the calendar saying here's the end of the world here's when jesus is coming you know they're lying god doesn't is not telling anybody <laughs> so it's it's the secret that god is keeping for as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. So here's an example that Jesus gives from the scriptures. He looks back at the story of Noah and Noah had God's word, right, to build the ark. He recognized that God was about to do something, uh, that the end of the world was uh, in the mind of, of God, right? It was, it was coming. Now, certainly just Noah building the ark was a testimony to the world that, that God was about to do something. But the, the picture that, we, that, that Jesus paints for us or that shows us, he takes it back to the scriptures, <clears throat> shows that people continued to do what they were going to do, right? They married, they had children, they... Uh, worked to make a living, gathered resources, so forth and so nothing, nothing changed. People did not acknowledge uh, God or his word. So Jesus uh, tells us this, then he paints this picture. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. <clears throat> one will be taken, one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. So again, the picture is like everything's going to be going along as, as normal. People are going to just be doing the things that they've always done. Um, but we need to be uh, ready and alert because we, we don't know. Uh, but know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left. Oh, I'm sorry. Would I not have let his house be broken into? Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect if we knew when Jesus was coming, right? We'd all be ready, packed and waiting. But Jesus is saying, we don't know. We don't know. So you need to be at all times ready, waiting. Uh, let's let's keep going because Jesus paints a picture here of uh, who, who the faithful servant of God is and who the, the wicked, unfaithful servant is. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all of his possessions. So there's a reward for the faithful servant. Notice that the faithful servant uh, trusts God is waiting for his master and actually does the work. Of, of that the master wants him to do right is, is the good steward so it's not just uh saying well i believe he's going to return but is actually doing the work of carrying out good stewardship right uh so here this is the opposite of this then is is the unfaithful servant verse 48 
But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and, eat and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the unfaithful wicked servant just carried out his own desires. It was not a good uh, steward. And we're stewards of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of, of, the word of God, uh, and uh, of his plans and purposes for us. So we also see then Jesus mentioning punishment, the justice of God that is being met out. And none of us likes to think about that. In fact, the world very much, at least in Western culture, uh, we very much get upset when people say that God is a just judge and we, and we talk about that. Uh, punishment of, of God. Yet we have no problem with lifetime sentences being handled out uh, here on earth, but uh, but we all are eternal beings, and, and God's justice and, and punishment and judgment is, is an eternal sentence as well, right? So, okay, well, let's, let's leave it there. We'll find out in verse 25, or I'm sorry, chapter 25, if Jesus continues to talk about this, but until then, be blessed.